When designing a structure, there are two different diaphragm analyses that can be done, flexible and rigid, for both wind and seismic. Depending on which analysis is used, the distribution of the load will vary. If a flexible analysis is being performed, the building face between shear lines is modeled as a simply supported beam. The shear lines are seen as pin supports, so the load striking the building between these supports is distributed via tributary width and goes entirely into these supports. If a cantilever beam is used, these loads go entirely into the adjacent support. In general, a flexible diaphragm is present when the vertical elements are much stiffer than the diaphragm itself. For an irregular structure, this analysis assumes that there is a drag strut or other force collection system bridging any gaps in the shear walls along a given shear line. It is therefore up to the engineer to design these force collectors. A rigid analysis accounts for shear forces due to relative stiffness of shear walls and the torsional behavior of the rigid floor diaphragms. The torsional eccentricity is related to the distance between the centroid of the applied design loads and the center of rigidity of the shear wall. An accidental eccentricity is added or subtracted from this distance to account for uncertainties. To calculate the eccentricity, the center of loading and the center of resistance must be calculated. The calculation of the center of rigidity of the diaphragm is based on the relative rigidities of the shear walls. Shear walls offers four options to the user to make this estimation. For more information on these options, please look at the video entitled Design Settings. The recommended method is to estimate the rigidity of each wall as the product of the length times its tabulated shear capacity. For walls with unknown values, the capacities used are for walls designed using the flexible diaphragm analysis. This method does not include the effect of the perforation factor for perforated walls. You can also enter your own rigidities on a wall-to-wall -wall basis. These rigidities are multiplied by the wall length. You can assume that the relative rigidities are equal so that the total rigidity is proportional to the wall length. In this case, you are neglecting the relative stiffness of the wall assemblies. For a rigid analysis, the more rigid the member, the more load is allocated to it. The last option in the settings menu lets you distribute the forces according to deflection. The less the member deflects, the more load will be allocated to it. This is an iterative procedure that is done until the deflection of each segment converges to the same amount. Both flexible and rigid diaphragm analysis are performed if possible. A rigid analysis must have all shear lines loaded in order to work. In the log file, you can view the calculations made for the rigid diaphragm analysis. Depending on which option you choose in the design settings to calculate the rigidities of the walls, the units for rigidity will be different. The accidental eccentricity, location of the center of rigidity, and even the torsional rigidity is shown in this file. According to the new changes implemented in ASC 7, in structures of light frame construction where there is no structural concrete topping and that the vertical elements of the seismic force resisting system complies with the allowable story drift, the diaphragm can be idealized as flexible. Also, smaller buildings, such as one and two family dwellings, 
can be exempt from rigid diaphragm distribution assumption. Furthermore, when the structure does not comply with the previous conditions, a flexible diaphragm is permitted when the diaphragm deflection is more than two times the average story drift of adjoining shear walls. At times, engineers need to use their judgment. For example, if a rigid analysis yields 5% to one line and 95% to the other, while the flexible analysis is found to be 50-50, the engineer should probably design for the larger of the two loads for the individual walls. This concludes the tutorial about flexible and rigid distribution.